Today on Callahan's Garage, we are going to finish with David's Beetle. So we got our floor pans done, we got our heater channels done, but we've still got a few little odds and ends spots on the car that we need to get finished up. So we're gonna finish those today and then we can stick a fork in this thing, it will be done. Alright folks, welcome back to Callahan's Garage. My name is Callahan and if you're just now joining us, this is David's 1965 Beetle. We have done a ton of work to it. In the last couple videos, we removed and we installed both of our new heater channels. Um, so if you haven't seen those, please go check them out and let me know what you think. But today we've got a few little things left to fix up on this thing before we totally send it back out. Um, so we got a couple little rust spots left that we need to fix. And then we got a few miscellaneous holes in the car, like we got a couple holes in the dash, we got some old metal work that needs to be kind of cleaned up and checked over. So we're gonna get all that done today. But first things first, we got our heater channels done so we can get all of this bracing out of the way. So I'm gonna cut this out of the way, free up a little, little bit of space in the car, we can get in here and start doing some work. Okay, so we got all the bracing cut out and cleaned up and you can see I just came and ground our B pillars and our A pillars nice and clean and after some paint work, it'll be like that stuff was never even there. Um, so next we're going to move inside the car. We got a couple of little areas that are, you know, very common that we have to repair when we do the heater channel. So we're going to take a look at those. So the next area we're going to look at is kind of this lower parcel tray area where it ties into the back of the heater channel here. And like I said, this is a super common area to rest out on these cars. Um, you know, odds are if you're having to do the heater channels, you're going to have to do some degree of patchwork or something right here too. Um, and they do make this whole piece. You can buy this whole lower parcel tray area to put in here and replace it if yours is a little worse off than this. But this one isn't really bad. So we're just I'm just going to cut this out. We'll fab us up a little patch piece here and we'll get it welded in. So this is a pretty good example of just a simple little area that needs replacing. Um, and you know, this isn't really bad enough to justify buying a whole replacement piece for this. So, you know, we're just, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to just fabricate a piece for this real quick. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come and I'm going to cut all around my rust here and make sure we get all this little rust out and then we'll make us a new piece to go in here. So pretty straightforward process here. We just cut everything out, we cleaned it up a little bit. We've made us a template that fits how this metal should fit now. So basically this piece just runs all the way straight down and ties into the bottom of our heater channel here. We've got a little piece to fill in our back here where the rust is. And we'll put us a little bead roll groove in here, a little bead roll groove right here so all everything matches up nicely. And we'll go turn this thing into metal now. So, got our new piece all whipped up, got us a nice bead roll down through there so it matches up correctly with the factory metal. Fits in there nicely, got us a little notch hammered in here so it matches up with this bead. We'll get that kind of worked in as we weld it in. So we'll come in, we'll weld this thing all up, clean it up, be done. And there we have it all patched up all done with this side so now we've got the exact same repair to do on the other side so i'm going to knock it out and just like that we got this side all fixed up so the last thing we need to do on this side is put our heater ducts back in so let's look at how to do that so these little heater duct pieces are really a pain in the butt to get out you know if your heater channels are in good shape so we had these already out because you know the area around it was kind of rusted out but these aren't too difficult to get back in and they just get a little tack on both sides to hold them in place so you kind of just slide it onto the back section and then pop it down in there 
put you some tax on it once you get it wiggled into place. My rotisserie is kind of keeping me from putting it all the way down into place. So once I get the body off the rotisserie, I'll come back and tack this in place. So we'll stick both of those in there and then we'll move on to the front of the car and we're almost, uh, we're almost wrapped up with this thing. Okay, so the last two rusty areas that we have to fix are kind of the bottom corners of our firewall here. We've got some rust on both sides. And just like in the rear, you know, if you're doing heater channels nine times out of 10, you've got to do a little repair work right here too. This is very common, um, you know, so fully expect to have to address this to some degree. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this out. I'll fab us up a new little piece and we'll get it patched up just like we did the back. Um, you can also buy a repair panel for this, you know, Classic Fab and several other people have these these sections available um, but you know this is a relatively straightforward area so i'm just going to make a piece and then we'll stick it in here um, so the first thing i'm going to do is i've gone ahead and i've made me a little template here that way i know exactly the shape that this needs to stay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this out and then i'll fab me up a bottom piece here and then i'll fab me up a little piece to box all this in we'll close it all up So we got our two basic pieces made, you know, so this is our inner firewall piece like I just showed you guys. Pretty straightforward. This piece that's going to be the bottom of our firewall that ties into the front half of that firewall, firewall there is going to be a little more complicated. And you can see I just bent this in my vise, you know, a box and pan break has been on my list of things to buy for years and years and I just never get around to getting one. But you know, that's kind of the point that I'm trying to make here is, you know, with some basic tools and a little bit of ingenuity and understanding you know, how to do this stuff, it's really not that hard. Um, so bent this piece up in the vise. The next thing we need to do is we need to shrink this edge here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow this to bend up so that it'll match up to the contour on the bottom of this piece. So basically this piece will end up fitting, you know, into the bottom of this piece and we'll weld this seam up now, you know, some really high-end sheet metal fab shops may be able to make this all out of one piece. I'm not that guy. So we're just gonna make it out of two pieces. We'll weld this seam up before we put it in. We'll get some good corrosion protection and everything on the inside, and it'll be totally good. And there we go. Got this side all closed up. And we'll move on to this side next. Got the exact same thing to do.
All right, so we've got both of the corners up here on the front of our heater channels finished up. So that concludes all of the rust repair that we have to do on this car. Um, you know, so we got our heater channels in, we got all of these corners, front and front and rear, all patched up and everything's nice and solid again. We got a bunch of corrosion protection sprayed up in there before we close this all back up. So, you know, really pleased with how all this came out. This is gonna last, you know, a really long time again. You know, we'll get, be able to get another 50, 60 years out of the car. Um, so there's a couple of other areas that we need to fix really quick and we're gonna take a look at those. All right, so the last place we need to work on on this car is the underside of the dash. And you know, it's not super uncommon for the, like the radio opening to be cut or there'll be a couple of extra holes in the dash that you need to repair. But as you can see, the underside of this dash in this car is just haggard. Um, so, you know, for whatever reason, We've got a bunch of screw holes all over the place. We've got several large, you know, holes that have been patched up previously. And basically, you know, whoever did this previously just didn't do anything to the backside of their welds and their patches. So if you open the hood of the car and look underneath there, everything under there is nice and smooth and clean, but they did not get into the car and clean up the underside of the dash at all. So, you know, they're just a good example of why you need to, you know, clean and address the backside of any of your patch panels, any of your welds, you know, anytime you can access that area. Because as you can see, you know, we've just got a bunch of rust that is initiating from the backsides of these joints. So we're gonna get all this cleaned up as best we can and kind of assess what, what all we gotta do here. I know we've got one hole right here that we're gonna have to totally patch up. Um, hopefully all of this will be able to just clean it up, grind it down smooth, and we won't really, really have to do anything to it. And then we've also got two additional holes in the fender wells. Um, so basically I think this car had an aftermarket AC on it at some point. Um, so we've got a couple of big holes where the vents would have come you know, into the cabin of the car. We've got a couple of holes in our fender wells and then we also had a couple of holes in the engine bay where all the AC lines and everything would have been run. Um, so you know, again, not a super common repair but I have had to do this several times before. So um, let's get all this cleaned up and we'll see how it looks. It turns out I was a little overly optimistic about this area of cleaning up and you can see here you know these old patches just really just didn't match up well it's gonna be really difficult to get this cleaned up and looking good without you know ruining our base metal here so I've already gone ahead and cut this one out we can see you know this is just terrible this is not good ended up having it it's got a bunch of filler on the top of it to you know make it look a little better than it actually was so we're gonna cut this out patch this up i'll cut this out cut this out we'll get all of this cleaned up and really looking good like it's supposed to so i'm going to knock that out and then we'll look at it when it's done okay so we're kind of hopping around you know doing some of these patch panels on, on the side of the dash and i've also got these two little holes in our fender wells here that we're going to patch up real quick so i'm going to show you a couple little tricks when you're doing just simple little flat patch panels like this um and when i say flat i mean it's we're just like plugging a hole like this you know we're not we're not dealing with any any body lines or contours there's no break in the materials or anything like that it's just a you know a piece of metal that we're sticking into a hole and filling up um so you know on these cars there's basically no you know truly flat panels you know pretty much every single piece of metal on the car has some kind of curve or crown or you know bend in the material so when we're pick, when we're making our little patch piece for this what we want to do is take your flat piece that you've cut out and then kind of hammer this and shape this to the material so it matches up and then from there you can come and cut your your piece out so if we look at this you know my little circle here it's got just a little bit of a crown on it because this section of the fender well has just that little bit of curve on it so then what i can do is i need to get this you know into place so i can start welding it in there and there's a couple different ways you can do that you know you can hold it in place with a magnet which sometimes helps and sometimes doesn't but on something like this what i find to be easiest is just use a piece of masking tape put it on you know the back side of your plug 
and then we can just place this into the hole and that tape is gonna hold it exactly where we need it. And the reason this is really beneficial is because that tape allows us to kind of manipulate this piece around and get it matching up really perfectly while not, you know, dropping it loose or knocking our magnet loose or anything like that. So, you know, that especially if we're working on one side of the panel and, you know, we can't really get to the other one, this just makes it really easy to hold everything in place and move it around a little bit as we tack around the piece. So I've got this piece tacked in now. So the next thing we really need to think about is, you know, when we're welding in a flat piece like this, you know, whether it's in a fender well or, you know, our, the underside of our dash here, you can see I've got this piece in, uh, or, you know, external body panels, you know, we always want to be as careful about warping the material as we can, you know, so doing small tacks at a time, you know, moving around the piece, using an air hose or something else to cool it off as you go you know so that's just something you always want to be you know mindful of is that you're not putting too much heat into the piece you're cooling it off as you work on it so that it doesn't you know end up warping the material especially if we're on you know an outside body panel you know door a quarter section a fender you know whatever it may be the less we warp the material and you know the less body work we have to do on the back end so you know just take your time be go slow um, you know, make sure your welder settings are set up. I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, so like, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna just going to tack around this. I'm going to cool it off as we go. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll get all these patches cleaned back up. Okay, so we've got our little patch panel welded up here and you can see you know we were able to mitigate a lot of the heat that went into this you know our heat effect zone is really small here but you know our tack welds are still pretty flat which is going to make you know our cleanup on this a lot easier so you know that's kind of the goal is to get just enough heat into it to get our you know good flat tacks but not so much heat that we have a large heat effect zone and we end up warping this material so let's go take a look at the welder settings Okay, so several people have asked, you know, about welder, you know, what welder are you using? What are your settings? You know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to try to not get too heavy into this. Um, you know, we are just talking about doing sheet metal at this point, you know, so basically everything on the car is, you know, 20 gauge, 18 gauge, you know, relatively thin stuff, you know, so the settings of our welder can really make a big difference, you know, on how successful all of these little tack welds and stuff like that are. Um, so, you know, having this set up correctly can really be beneficial. Um, so, you know, my welder, this is just a little Millermatic 211. It's a very, you know, relatively light duty, pretty versatile machine. Um, the biggest bon bonus to this is, you know, this can run off a standard 110 outlet or you can, you know, wire it up to 240, you know, either way. Um, so like here in my shop, I've got a 30 amp breaker, you know, 240. Um, so this thing can do, you know, pretty much everything I need it to do. Um, so with that, I've got regular old 70 s6 wire in here it is 035 um you know a lot of by a lot of people's standards 035 is a little too large of a wire for you know sheet metal but you know that's all you know personal preference um if you're doing exclusively sheet metal i'd probably drop down to like a 030 that way you're not getting quite as much fill on some of those tacks and stuff um, but like I said, you know, I do a lot of different stuff in here. Um, I do sheet metal. I built the rotisserie. I've done some trailer repairs. You know, I do a little bit of everything. So having a little bit larger wire just keeps me from having to swap back and forth between wires all the time. And then keep in mind, we are talking about MIG welding here. So we have a bottle of shielding gas. It's just regular 7525, nothing, nothing fancy. Um, you do not want to be doing this stuff with any, any variation of flux core wire. You know, self-shielded flux core wire is terrible you know it absolutely has its place but it is not doing body metal um and then like dual shield flux core wire you know where we're using the flux core wire in addition to a shielding gas bottle you know that's for structural stuff you know we're not doing body sheet metal with that so you know if you don't have a shielding gas supply on your welder you need to get that set up you know you're not going to be able to really have good successful clean welds on body metal without using the mig process you know so 7525 gas 
Um, like I said, ER70S-6 wire, you know, that's what's gonna get you really clean, successful welds when we're talking about doing body metal. So as far as our settings go, um, you know, when we're, look, when we're talking about our MIG welder settings, remember the only thing we really have is our voltage setting and then our wire speed setting. Um, so as far as our voltage for 20 gauge, um, you know, you're really only talking about, you know, maybe 15 to 17 volts, depending exactly on what gauge metal you're at. Um, I prefer to, to weld a little bit hotter. So like on mine currently, this doesn't even give you a voltage setting necessarily. It's just got our, our gauge thickness on the outside. And then it's got us like a one, two, three, you know, one to 10 scale for our voltage. And I've got it set to three, which is recommended for 18 gauge. So, you know, that's, pro that's close to about 17 volts. Um, and then on my wire speed on these machines, you can set it to auto set on your wire speed. So I've just got, I just leave this thing set to auto set for 035 wire and it automatically adjusts the wire speed for, you know, whatever the machine sees that you need. But your wire speed for about 17 volts will be around, you know, 250 inches per minute. Um, you know, so on most, on most of your machines, that would be like two and a half, um, you know, somewhere between two, two and a half. But also just keep in mind, you know, a lot of these settings are gonna tweak a little bit, you know, just on personal preference, you know, every machine was a little bit different. Um, you know, all the wires are a little bit different. So, you know, that there's gonna be a little bit of variation, you know, usually if I'm on, you know, some of the thicker areas of the car, you know, I may, I may bump this up to like three and a half. If it's somewhere where, you know, the material's really thin, it's rusty a little bit, you know, I may drop this down to like two and a half, you know, so there's always a little bit of wiggle room here, but just keep in mind, you know, having, consistent weld settings, new consumables, you know, having everything set up correctly is, is really gonna benefit you long-term, you know, when you're putting all this stuff together. It's gonna make your weld joints that much easier. And the other thing you to keep in mind, you know, when we're talking about our weld settings, you know, this is crucial, but our joint fit up is just as critical. You know, if you've got a big gap in your, your patch panels, you know, it's gonna be really difficult to weld that gap up, regardless of what your weld settings are at. Um, and if you have a really tight gap, you know, you may not be able to get full penetration all the way through that if your weld settings aren't high enough, you know, so there's a lot of variables here and I'm trying to not talk too much about this, but just keep that in mind, you know, your weld settings, your gap fit up, you know, your panel fit up, all of that is really important. And, you know, just, just think about everything, you know, as you're going through all these steps. All right, so we got everything up under the hood finished under here. So all of those big haggard holes that we had in the bottom of the dash, we got those all patched up and cleaned up. And we ended up with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six patches that we had to do just under the hood here. Um, you know, so we got all these holes from the old AC patched up, cleaned up. Everything's nice and smooth, nice and smooth under the underside of the dash as well. So pretty solid repair. You know, we're moving on to the next phase in this thing. All right, folks, well, with that, I think we have reached the finish line on all of our metal work on David's Beetle here. Um, so, you know, if you're new to the channel, we did a ton of work to this thing. We did front and rear aprons. We did a whole series on the heater channels. We did the floor pans. We did all this odds and ends stuff. We did a bunch of metal work to this car. So, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, if you need that kind of information, there's a whole playlist that's nothing but uh, sheet metal work on David's Beetle here. So go check that out. But we are gonna do one more video with David's Beetle. Um, so we're gonna take the body off of the rotisserie, we're gonna get it back on the floor pan, we're gonna kinda of put it back together so he can pick it up and transport it to the body shop. So then we're also gonna take a really good look at the rotisserie. I've had a bunch of people ask me about the rotisserie. So while we're taking it off, I'm gonna show you kinda of all of the mount points, how I built it, how I put it together, and hopefully get some more information so the, those of you that are interested can build your own or you know find somebody to build you one because it is a really valuable tool you know when we're getting into this level of work so like i said if you're new to the channel we've got a ton of information on doing sheet metal work on these beetles so please go check out that playlist let me know what you think on the videos you know like comment all that good stuff if you haven't subscribed yet please do and i will see you guys next time